Now it's time for Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf, the number one relationship advice radio show in the U.S. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ask Dr. Love. It's my pleasure to be with you again this week. I'm so excited to bring you my show today with my dear guest, Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes. And we're going to be talking about parts of yourself that you've allowed to die while you're still living. And Temple always says the secret of life is not whether you live or die, but whether you allow yourself to be fully alive while you're living. And we're going to talk about how tragedy and challenges are meant to make you more, not less alive. Let me just tell you a quick bit about my guest, Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes. She's a rebel. She's a renegade. And she's been resurrected a thousand times already in this one lifetime. She suffered a lot of abuse in childhood combined with the pressure of having to deny her sexual identity. And that caused her to begin drinking at age 13. She spent her life driving herself deeper and deeper into numbness, dying a little each day. And eventually Temple forged a new life from her ashes of the day-to-day -day death a life that embraced bringing others to the realization of being worthy and loved and in opening their hearts. Temple's a catalyst for turning lingering sorrows into brighter tomorrows and restoring all parts of yourself. Having joined the ministry in 1981, Temple has been the spiritual leader at Unity Campus in St. Pete, Florida, and a key member of the Leadership Council of the Association of Global New Thought and her book, When Did You Die?, is anchored in her work to fast forward people to the impassioned and energized living they so richly want and deserve. In addition to When Did You Die?, she also authored How to Speak Unity and The Right to Be. Temple is a sought after motivational speaker traveling the United States and abroad for a variety of clients, including Procter & Gamble, Washington Mutual, State Farm Insurance, and Compaq. As part of her commitment to service, she's also spent three years in the United States Army Reserves. She's the founder of Life Rights, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the right of all to live the life of their intention in freedom and peace, and the SOF Project, a nonprofit organization that rescues and rehabilitates dogs and cats globally. For more information, you can find her at templehaze.com. So, Temple, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful to see my wonderful, amazing, not only my friend and colleague, but a, a real difference maker. You know, oh, that's honey. who you are. And it's just a, just a privilege to be here. You are lovely. So, you know, I was reading your bios and everything, and I thought, my goodness, I think it's just inspiring to hear your life story and how you lived a daily walking death or if you're feeling free to share it and how you transformed into wow i'm living a living death and and all the work that you've developed as a result you know ab absolutely and i i think that that's one of the greatest things and that's part of the amazing work that you do is that we are here, we evolved at a time that we're here to show people it's not really what we've been taught. You know, Alvin Toffler says that the, the issue in the 21st century isn't about, you know, people that don't know how to read and write. It's people that don't know how to unlearn, relearn, and then new learn in a different way. And we're so duped in our society uh, that, you know, tragedy wears you out. You start telling everybody you're old by the time you're 40. And, you know, and you have to, you know, listen to this, you know, 24-hour news and let breaking news break you. And then, you know, if there's anything left, you're medicated so you don't have to feel it. And the story goes on and on and on. And then you live in this model of I'm supposed to retire. So I'm, I'm just, that's it. It's over. And the, it's the opposite, really, because... What I have learned, and this is what I want your audience to understand, you go through things, your soul goes through experiences to draw out more of you, to bring in the dynamic person that you are so that you can be a difference maker, not only to yourself, but everybody around you. 
And I had to figure that out because I didn't want to be here. It took me 48 hours to be born. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know if I want to go in this incarnation at all. And so, and so I was, and I wasn't born into, you know, a family that they sent me to the mystery school and they said, you're an indigo. Let's get you to the mystery school. They're going, who are you? <laughs> and, and, and you were born in the South. You know? In the South of religiosity, and there's only one way, and that's the Baptist way. And you, if you, even if you converse about anything else, you're destined to hell. And so I knew that the I talked to God when I was five uh, in nature, because nature is God and God is nature. And I, I knew intuitively, though I didn't know that word at five, that I was fine. I was getting these messages from God, and then I'd go inside the house, and they would go who are you? Oh, you're embarrassing to me. Oh my gosh. You know, and because I just had my own mind, I, I would read scripture and I would quote it in a different way, etc. Well, then when my father discovered me and a 17 year old girl in the bedroom, uh, kissing and everything, you know, that was a big deal. I was 13 and a half. Well, that image showed him that, whoa, where's my daughter going? My grandmother, who adored me, I was her favorite, named after her husband, John Temple. And he, you know, they gathered together and went, oh, Temple, we're so sorry. We're not going to see you in heaven. I'm 13 and a half. I don't even have my permit to drive a car. And I'm already being destined and challenged to say, you're going to hell. So because I had these externals, the culture, the Baptist, every direction is like, you are not okay. You know, get away from us. And Jamie, it was, it was hard. It, it, was, it was tough. I'm not going to kid you because people looked at me different. They didn't go, oh, there's Temple, the life of the party. They went, she's here. She's here. And so that was hard as a teenager. So I'm not blaming but I certainly, because I was abandoned and rejected, I did that to myself. So alcohol you know, was And also you suffered life. abuse because you said that you're, you watched your dog and your cat be murdered yes. by your parent. Absolutely. Yep. And they didn't, they didn't think a thing about it. Oh, just throw him on the truck. That was just a dog. That was just a cat. You know, that kind of thing. It was just, and there's still sadly unbelievable you know places across our cultures that still feel the same way so it it was just a real like in the early stages of my life it was just very very difficult um and yet I had to learn again how to shift it around the other way so I am now a spokesperson for the voiceless you know, for the animals, for life rights, for sexuality related issues or whatever, because that's what we do. And that's what you've done. You took yeah. the sacred story that quite frankly, you are so fortunate. And I know you at a deeper level and with your book and many a person, unlike what you have done, would climb in a closet, say, I've only had one love of my life. I'll never love again. I'm doomed. Let me just medicate. I don't want to feel, let me drink until I die. And that would be it. But no, you didn't. You took your sacred story, which is what creates us. Our pain is our creation story. Our sacred story is that we are here to be different, right? Our creation story is the things that we attract define and shape us if we let them. And you did. And so I, as I say to you uh, often, any person that comes to me that's had tragic loss, I say, read the book, Love Never Dies. I don't <laughs> have to coach. I don't have to try to come up with words because 90% <laughs> of us don't know what to say. We usually say something that's embarrassing. You know, like, well, I'm sorry your dog died, but at least you have another one. I'm like, I, I know, know, I, know, I, know, I, know I, I didn't know. hear you say that. But to the people, I just say, read love never dies. Or if it's someone I know well, I'll say, is this still your address? I'm going to send you this book. Aww. So you are a living example of that, my friend. And your story, it changes people every day all over the world, because what you did took a lot of courage to step up and say, my husband physically isn't here, but almost, and he shows up in my life all the time. And that's 
the part of it that is, you know, is so powerful. But my uh, thing is, yes, about dying and, and reincarnation and, you know, we don't really die, but it's the energy has been don't die while you're living. Living people never die. That's for sure. I, you know, I'm one, I'm it's, one so, of them. it's so amazing because <laughs> I think that the pain we all suffered as kids, nobody is exempt. You know, right. you're so alone in your pain. And if only we had a way of running group therapy for every single kid who's suffering and thinking I'm the only one feeling this pain. And if you could connect energetically through virtual groups and discover every single person feels alone and every single person feels like he or she is suffering the pain that you're feeling and you are not alone in this pain. And I am not alone in saying I'm bummed out that we have to right. take a break. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Are you or someone you love struggling with an addiction to drugs or alcohol and want to be set free from the chains of addiction? Then call Addiction Helpline America right now to get the help you need. From drug and alcohol addiction to dual diagnosis treatment, we provide a confidential helpline to help people like you get sober and live happy, substance-free lives. Treatment helped me get my life back. I was so addicted, the only person I could focus on was myself and what I needed. I hit rock bottom and lost everything. Through treatment, I was able to overcome those demons and focus on my family again. I used until I overdosed and almost died. That was the end of the road for me. After seeking treatment, I now have hope. I learned skills that help me deal with life on life's terms. 800-398-9845. 800-398-9845. 800-398-9845. That's 800-398-9845. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's international number one bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, shows you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit. To find out more, visit AskDrLove.com. And now, back to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. <laughs> so here we are, talking with Temple Hayes, the lovely Temple Hayes, about how you can live while you're still living. And, uh, <laughs> so. you, you know what's so funny is because we're talking about dying and people that are on the other dimension that still communicate with us. When you said, I think I'm supposed to come back, I thought for a minute you were thinking, did, did you just ascend? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm supposed to come back. I went, I'm happy. <laughs> right. It was, it was sort of like the sound died and then it, right. you know, hello. So, right. you know, it's so funny. Um, so we were saying before the break that the pain that we suffer in childhood, the pain, you know, I think it's much easier to bear anything when we know we're not alone, right? That we have yeah. someone else, a group, a therapist, a, a minister, a reverend, somebody to talk to who says, I know how you feel, I understand. You know, I remember right. when I was training Temple, you know, it's not about fixing, it's about just understand the person, you know? Understand what that person is going through. And that is so healing. And if you feel that you're not alone and you feel you're understood, you don't need to do the numbing things with the drugs and the alcohol to somehow die a slow death because you can't take your pain. Absolutely. It's, um, I would say for, for me and my experience and with those that I've encountered, the number one great healer is validation. Is, is, is validation is someone that goes, I get it. I, I may not have been, I, I, I haven't been what you gone through what you've gone through, but what I know is I know that it, it's real to you and I'm just going to hold the space for you and that you'll be healed, you know, and often on radio shows and things like that, when I, when I share certain parts of my story and they go, Oh, you know, you're still talking about your childhood. Yes because the number one cause of, of suicide 
and kids. It, I mean, it's, it's suicide. And it, I don't blame my parents. I'm one of those now that say after 30, get a life. Stop blaming anybody. You know, when you, when you don't claim where you are in your life, you may not have had a choice about what happened to you then, whatever that is, but you, you have a choice now. And 35 years this September, I'm sober and um, I love it. it on the rare times that I may go to a doctor, maybe once every 10 years. And I, they go, do you don't take anything? And I go, no, uh -uh, this is just, uh, this is all just real. This is life. This is uh, the infinity of spirit. And they're just so shocked by that because that's not the norm. We are programmed uh, from early on. If you're not getting the thrill, take a pill. You know. Oh, they, I love that crazy, acronym. Right? If you're not getting a thrill, take a pill. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, the older you get, the more work you have to do. It's not about blaming. It's no. about, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you haven't gotten in touch with how you feel about what happened to you during your deformative years, that is not a joke. Those are your yeah. deformative years. If you have, haven't gotten in touch with it and worked through the feelings, you could be 80 and you might as well still be two years old. It's unhealed. So it's not something that we grow out of. To, and we bury these problems, these traumas, the feelings. We bury it alive. It doesn't go okay. away. That's right. You're it doesn't so go right. away. That's right. And if you don't feel valid, you become invalid. You invalidate yourself. Yes. You, you invalidate, you know, who you are as a, as a human being. And, you know, I love the work that you do because you're, you're telling, well, you do a lot as in your professional work, but with your book itself and you're teaching people, there's a different way of seeing this. If you'll open, if you'll grieve, if you'll get on the other side of a loss, uh, the people that you love, uh, they'll communicate with you. The animals that you've lost will show up like a butterfly or a penny, or it doesn't have to end because love uh, never dies. And my work is about what I discovered that is on the subconscious in shamanism and being an energy healer is a lot of things are driving us that we literally, if we could bring them up and, and heal them, we would. We're intelligent people in our nature. But it really helps sometimes to have people point out, like the whole planet right now could just use a really good soul retrieval <laughs> because we're still in shock from the pandemic. You know, we just, we're in shock. And so as you've noticed, some people are still like in COVID toasts. They're kind of participating in life, but they're not. They're kind of like, waiting and seeing and, and kind of numb. And uh, these kind of shows help support people that to wake up, you know? Right, and right. And as you know, I think I mentioned to you over the phone when we were getting ready for this show, that when you have an accident, an illness or a single trauma, you lose all your magnesium, which triggers instant PTSD and magnesium supplementation reverses PTSD. So a lot of people are suffering what I call, I coined it the global PTSD pandemic stress That's syndrome. And it doesn't go away just because the pandemic is over because the deficiency that resulted from the stress doesn't reverse itself. And that's why we need the supplementation. And, you know, people can't believe that I recommend electromagnesium. How can that be? You don't make any money from it. You're not a distributor. Who would do that? But you know how it is when, you know, you're doing things because you know it's best for people. It's not about the making of the money. You know, it's just right. the right thing to do. So, yeah. You know, I, I'm in the backyard now and all the orange jasmine is in bloom yes. and the entire atmosphere is perfumed with this fragrance. And you were saying a few moments ago about how uh, the divine is in nature mm -hmm. and just being present to that scent, just being in the now is, is such a reminder, you know, something as simple as try to be aware of what you're smelling, even if it smells stinky, right? right. Just right. be in the now. And that's yeah. the opposite of sort of walking like a corpse and being dead before you're out of your body. Yeah. 
It's so true in that what they say, like, even if you complain that something smells bad, give thanks that you can smell because exactly. a lot of people can't. Or if you find the noise uh, really annoying, give thanks that you have that, you know, that, that you can hear, right? That you, that you can hear. Yeah. And, you know, in our society, people, they don't like to talk about dying and everybody pretends like it's not going to happen. That was one of the things that fascinated me when COVID started. People were going, this stuff can kill you. It's like, are you just getting that we're going to die? You know, <laughs> but, but it's, it really is a journey of how do we live and how do we <clears throat> stay alive and what is causing us to die every day. And like you're talking about with magnesium, that's something that is an easy tool that you can go and do. Uh, right. You don't have to medicate and you can be awake and maybe sometime we'll start a call in Zoom for the needs you were talking about and for kids to have a safe place. To that do. would be so fantastic. So Let's fantastic. You know, um, I wrote a lot of poems when Jean left his body because, you know, obviously I got a lot of downloads about the purpose of living. And one of yeah. them was live your life now and enjoy your journey do this before your final ride on a gurney. <laughs> we got to take a break. <laughs> but I'll be back in a moment. Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-762-6158. 800-762-6158. That's 800-762-6158. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please, don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. Eight hundred nine one eight one three seven six. That's eight hundred nine one eight thirteen seventy six. You're listening to Ask Doctor Love with Doctor Jamie Turndorf. If your heart is still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one, the reason is simple: we're not meant to be separated from those we love, and reconnecting is the only way to end the grief. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. As a gift to her listeners, Dr. Turndorf is offering a limited number of discounted grief relief sessions to help you reestablish your relationship and resolve any unfinished issues. If you're ready to experience the healing and joy of reconnecting, visit AskDrLove.com slash grief relief to schedule your session. But don't wait, space is limited. Visit AskDrLove.com slash grief relief to Welcome find out more. Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf talking with the Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes. We're having such a great time. Temple, I just always love having you on the show. One of the things you said you wanted to talk about was how we're programmed with the wrong information about beauty and aging. A absolutely. Um, and just by the way, um, my sixth grade teacher told my parents I was never going to amount to anything because I talk too much. <laughs> yeah, right. So just remember, all of you make a love note that what you've been criticized often is your greatest gifts. And so Isn't just, that the truth? Just keep that in and hold that in your heart. Yes, to me, in my humble opinion, um, where we really went off track as, as a spiritual connected universe and being this is that when we started being bombarded with 24-hour breaking news with imagery over and over repeating itself as well as when we could advertise pharmaceutical products online and on billboards and we started buying into this system that we're told 
that we are going to get old. And if you if you want to look this way, according to this magazine cover, and you want to be this, then you got to take this stuff. And one of the things that people often say, I know you've said it too, if you don't understand something, there's usually a money trail in there somewhere. You yeah, know? you know, and it's so you believe, it's so unbelievable, Temple, what you're saying, because when you look at the drug uh, commercials, like yeah. I saw one for uh, allergies, and it listed side effects include itchy, watery nose and runny eyes. <laughs> and I'm thinking the oh, side yeah. effects oh, are yeah. the drug or what oh, the drug God. is trying to yeah. treat or they're causing worse conditions. It's horrifying. And then these youth promoting surgeries, the labioplasties. Yeah. So women will get their labia made smaller to look like pre-adolescent girls. Yeah. And it's to look younger. I, it's tragic. My wife and I call them pantyhose faces. You know, we live in uh, Santa Barbara. So we have, we have a lot of uh, pantyhose faces, <laughs> you know, the over fixing so your face. So you won't, you know, and it, whatever, we all have choices and I don't need to make people wrong. I'm simply saying, I'm talking a fundamental belief that the longer you live, the more useful you can become because you have less things to think about. You have, you, you learn boundaries. You don't spend your energy on things that, you know, don't warrant your power or your essence. And we're not here really to ever get old. Old is a choice. Aging is inevitable. I mean, you can make your face pretty, but you still got to do the spots on your hands and you got to do everything else, you know, but aging is, is something that you can have this opinion of being younger than anybody, you know, and it really works. I, uh, many years ago, I went, okay, yeah, it looks like I probably physically will die. No one's come up with a pill yet. That's going to keep us from really physically dying. But I want to be the kind of person that when I'm in my 60s, that people will say, how do you have so much energy? Right. People ask me that all the time. How do you have so much energy? And I said, well, because I don't believe it comes from me. <laughs> because I don't take pills. You know, it fascinates me, Jamie. It makes me cry, Dr. Turndorf, that, you know, people are, like you're saying, taking all these pills and what do they start having panic attacks and anxiety? And then they have to take pills for that. Why? Uh, in many cases, because the body can't absorb all this stuff. And if also you, in my latest book, if you think you don't have PTSD, I cite the research that the drugs cause magnesium wasting. So you develop anxiety and panic, which is a symptom of low magnesium believe it or not. You are, yeah. And you're so right on. And you made a profound statement. You know, you will go to a car mechanic or a computer store and ask them 25 questions. What if, and how come, and, and, and show me, but yet you'll take your body somewhere and never ask the question. Oh, they said, and I'm supposed to take, you know, and I'm supposed to do it and never look at the side effects. If you are out there right now having any kind of symptoms and you're on medication, stop what you're doing right now and read the side effects. And I bet you in many cases, you're going to see that's that. I was talking to a guy, he came to our home and he was uh, 80, headed to 90 and real young. And he's like, and Dr. Jamie, they were going to do surgery on him. Okay. Why? Well, because I have a runny nose. And I said, entertain me. Let's just go on the computer. How many pills do you take? I take four. Three of the four side effect, runny nose. And yes. I said, and the doctor didn't tell you that? No, they never asked. They just no. want to do surgery. No, and Why? also when you pile up the drugs, when you're older, your detox pathways are more compromised. Yes. So you're going to have more side effects perhaps even than a younger person. And they work synergistically in a negative way to give you more side effects. Right. You know, I was my uncle is struggling with some kind of sinus congestion and allergies. 
And I, you know, in Chinese medicine, they call it nose duties, you know, as yeah, you, you sure. change the filters in your car, right? But people don't think about cleaning out the filters of their kidneys and their liver. And as we age, we accumulate a lot of crap in our right. organs and a lot of diseases come from the storage of crap. So, you know, I am fasting now. You and I, we do a lot of cleanses. I do yeah. massive fasting and cleansing. I don't take drugs either. When something goes wrong, I go to cleanses, you know? So I was telling my uncle, you really, really need to do a cleanse now to get the crap out of you. So it stops coming out your nose, which is an alternate detox pathway because it's not coming out adequately through your liver and your kidneys. So he says, well, I poop every day. Well, but the, you can poop and still have clogged, you know, organs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, and, and he's, I'd rather be dead. Well, that, you know, that's not thinking in a young way. So yeah. am I having fun when I'm on a fast? Not necessarily, but I'm, you know, saying I would rather be present to this experience and live fully in the reality that as I get older, I have to be more careful about cleansing, even than when I was younger. That's part of choosing to be younger and present in my body and, you know, honoring this vessel so that I can be here, you know? Right. So you, you know can be I mean. totally present. Absolutely. And like anything, everything requires effort. Yeah. You know, uh, being on pharmaceuticals and not ever looking at, is there something I can do? That takes effort. You know, everything takes effort. So, you know, it's just making choices that uh, create a, a more youthful life and, and not spending our energy that way. And, and the way you think, you like you said before, if you think I'm old, the body, the unconscious listens to what you say and starts producing chemical changes in the body that actually start cell death and, and aging. And if you mm -hmm. think I'm, I'm young and I'm present and I'm vital, your body listens to that as well. And you want to hang out with people like me and, uh, Dr. Jamie, who believe in these things. I mean, that's the whole thing. You want to have people in your boat that believe like you, because it is challenging when you're just surrounded with people that are negative or, you know, wake up in the morning and turn on the, the TV vision of, you know, the same imagery that you've already heard, you know, 10 times. We don't need to be aloof. I am aware of what's going on but I kind of scan with an overview, but when you're bombarded with that- Well, there's another point, die, right? Literally. Because they say that our own um, systems were not prepared to handle bad news from all over the world. We, we, we began in small tribes. So we only heard the bad news of our tribe or maybe the yep. neighboring tribes. Now we're hearing information from the global tribes. It's more than our adrenals and our nervous systems can handle. And that triggers PTSD and more, you know, chemical imbalance. So and have social to take media a break. does that too. If you I know are it's one the of same those deal. To social media, you know, and you have a lot of friends, which aren't really friends usually, but they're, you know, that's the and word. They're they horrible do. stories. And, they and that's not the same as connecting. I, I'm, I gotta disconnect for one sec for a break, but we'll be back. All right. Recover Now is a national campaign aimed at the education and awareness of the devastating effects of opioid and heroin abuse and curbing drug and alcohol addiction in the United States. Recover Now is sponsored by treatment facilities nationwide. Many of them have been where you are, and they want to help by spreading a message of hope and recovery. They're working hand in hand with major insurance companies nationwide that can help you or a loved one get clean in 7 to 30 days. Recover Now is embarking on a national outreach campaign on TV and radio to promote anti-addiction messages. So if you, a loved one, or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, do not wait. A new life for you could be 30 days away. Call us right now. I promise this call can change your life. Sponsored by the Detox and Treatment Helpline. 800-934-6091. 800-934-6091. That's 800-934-6091. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, 
Dr. Turndorf's international number one bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, shows you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit. To find out more, visit AskDrLove.com. And now, back to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Welcome back to Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, talking with Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes. You know, I noticed, Temple, today is the first day that all these spots are running for addictions and addiction centers. I love and how, it. how fitting that this I is know. what you were talking about because people resort to drugs and alcohol when the pain is unbearable right and it's hard to be living fully and press you know when jean left his body the pain was so bad at first that i remember weeping in my professional group and saying it'd be better for me to be dead you know yeah. i can't stand having these feelings and everybody said to me but jamie the alternative to not having these feelings is to just be numb to everything. And of course, they reminded me of that truth. You know, you can't have the sun without the night. You know, yep. if you want mm -hmm. to be alive to the joy, you have to also be alive to the pain. It, totally. And I think the other thing that I've discovered for myself and others is that, you know, when you pursue being connected and spiritual and you're awake and you're not medicated and those kind of things, we often think we're going to reach like a nirvana. Like, oh, you know, I'm doing all this. I took the workshops. I worked on my emotional DNA. I worked with my shaman. I healed my energy. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to just be in joy all the time. You actually are more sensitive. You actually hear things at a deeper level. You actually at times weep more about a crisis or children being shot in school, or you intuit when a earthquake is gonna happen in Japan, that's happened to me. Those kind of things you feel at a greater capacity and yet you are present and you can bring to these experiences a greater sense of light or possibility or you know doing the kind of work that that you do but people do confuse that oh i'm you know because i'm evolving then i you know i'll just get to a place that i don't have any problems anymore no you feel them you still have problems because you're a human being um and you and you feel what everybody else is going through but in a different way you know yes so. it's true and you you're certainly more alive to all your feelings. You're more yes. alive to everything. And that has, you know, an upside and a downside. And that is the duality of life, you know? Absolutely. But your willingness to share out loud, um, my willingness to share out loud is part of the agreement on this journey as a soul. You know, we came, we were caught off guard probably with some of these things that we had to walk through, but through that push and being born in a new way, we're able to relate, share, you know, offer hope. You know, I just grace. realized something, how you were not hesitant, you know, and we're 48 hours in, in labor. <laughs> I came out three months too early. Oh my God, look at you. Know? you. <laughs> but uh, you see, it's like everything I've done is always like, oh, you're three decades too early. Oh, that's funny. Three months too early, three decades too early. Isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely, I, I tease people. I go, yes, my mother was in labor with me so long and it probably hurt so bad that every time she sees me, even now she goes, uh. <laughs> Ow, you're giving me Ow. a cramp. Oh you're my giving gosh. me a Ab cramp. Yep. That is so funny. That yes. is so funny. So I think you told me that part of your living fully now has been to work a little bit less for the first time in your life. You moved to California. Mm -hmm. 
I made some vows to myself. And, and let me just clear that the word retire is not in my vocabulary. Definitely. I, I just said work a little it. less right now, I, right? I don't believe in it. I think it's a, it's a, it's a prophecy that creates an energy for people. If you Correct. don't get things done by a certain age, you'll never get them done. And like you said, I think cells die from that kind of reality. Think about how many people you've known as soon as they retired and they Correct. traveled twice then they were dead you know? so I don't don't believe in that but I I believe that um truly like we've done a lot of the work already and now we're going to benefit from the joy of that and it's not the number of hours that we spend doing something but it's the energetic presence of allowing and having a great opportunity to move from Florida all the way across the country to California, there were many agreements that like, I'm not toting those with me. I'm not packing those in my psychic luggage. I am going to be free from that, have greater boundaries and just enjoy more, you know, and experience more and see what comes my way. I think it, often we're on automatic you know, we are, you know, what is that saying that we spend the first part of our life creating habits that affect the, the second part of our life? You know, I'm going for 200, by the way, I've changed that number. I'm going oh. for 200. As I always say, nobody will talk about you if you don't miss the mark, right? <laughs> that is so, so funny. You know, it's funny because on the day that Sean left his body, he said to me, I feel like I felt in my early 30s. Wow. He had eternal youth. The man never aged. He never had anything wrong with him. The bee got him, you know, it, but it was, it, the, the, he definitely lived, you know, like he was eternal and his body listened, no doubt about it, you know. But the bee, you know, the, uh, the shaman, the power totem, the medicine of, of a bee is fertility and new creation. And look at the work the two of you have done. I mean, yes. literally the hundreds of thousands of lives you've changed yes. through, you know, what happened. And by the way, everyone, I just want to say that, you know, I've heard, uh, <laughs> I've heard Dr. Jamie's lectures and how he shows up on computers and stuff like that. I want you to know I'm a recipient of that. I wanted many, to, you know what, Temple? Many a time when Temple, I've been on the computer, I found he what he up, sent he you. Stuff on my I have, computer. I'm going to share it. <laughs> I'm going to share it. When we come back, yes. I'm going to share it because I saved what he sent you. All right? <laughs> I did. But, you know, the crazy thing is, he sent you a lot of things. Like we were talking about how he takes people's computers over. And mine many times through the years. He'd come in many. on my computer or put an Eiffel Tower there. Remember that? I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. I'm going to, well, during the break, I'm going to look for the video of him taking over your computer. And also I have a photo of him taking over your computer. Let's take a break and I'll, I'll do some quick housekeeping and see if I can find it. Okay, yeah. Be back with you in a moment. You're listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If your heart is still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one, the reason is simple. We're not meant to be separated from those we love, and reconnecting is the only way to end the grief. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. As a gift to her listeners, Dr. Turndorf is offering a limited number of discounted grief relief sessions to help you reestablish your relationship and resolve any unfinished issues. If you're ready to experience the healing and joy of reconnecting, visit AskDrLove.com slash grief relief to schedule your session. But don't wait, space is limited. Visit AskDrLove.com slash grief relief to find out more. Have you ever met a single person in your life that enjoys paying taxes? No, no one does. If you can't sleep at night because you have a huge problem with the IRS, 
I've got some free advice for you. This service is strictly limited to individuals that owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes. And if you qualify, we can guarantee that you won't be writing a big fat check to the IRS or our services cost you nothing. The first 100 people that call today will get a free tax consultation worth $500. Stop worrying about your IRS problem. We can help you, we promise. Call the tax doctor right now. I mean right now to learn more. 800-668-2493. 800-668-2493. 800-668-2493. That's 800-668-2493. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. I'm talking with the lovely Reverend Dr. Temple Hayes. Temple, before we took the break, I said I was going to screen share and show what Jean sent you. Here's the first thing. So for people watching live, um, you can see, you said to me that Jean said he was going to do something. And the next thing you knew, you looked at your desktop. This is crazy. Do you see it? Oh yeah, it's absolutely crazy. It looks like a bunch of cosmic orbs all over. He would come in a few times. It was absolutely amazing. And then here's another thing you sent me, which absolutely was surprising. Um, I thought I opened this. This is a, yeah, this is a video. Let's see if I can, did I stop the share? See, I have, this is like pat your head and rub your stomach all at the same time. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, I all, right, all right, I'm going to share again. See, I'm sharing my own computer. So I got to make sure I take off um, what you don't want to see and show what you do want to see. Yeah, here it is. There we so go. here it is. Here's a video. Yes, what we're looking at here is just very odd energetic frequencies. You know, the energies of the the soul essence of our loved ones in spirit create interruptions in the frequency, you know. So the electromagnetic signals interrupt our technologies, turn lights on and off, make machines work in a funky way. Yeah, he plays with you a lot. Yeah. And, and we, and yes, and it would be often, you know, when we were talking about him or something and then there, and then he does go. it so very it, playful. You know, it, it really was that way. And, um, I, and people, and they, they say, let me look for a butterfly, but you know, you expand that consciousness to look for a lot of things. My friend, Kim, whose husband died younger, um, and it was devastating for her and, And you, you know, said to her, um, you know, you talked to her for a long time and you were the greatest medicine for her life. So she started looking for him and she got up one morning and said, Jimbo, if, if Dr. Jamie is really correct and you're really here, I'm still mad at you because I can't find this earring, the one of the set that you gave me and I want to find it. And she walked out like outdoors, downstairs, a wall on the cement and there come on and there was her earring right there you know and she walked by it every day so this is the kind of stuff that we settle for so less than who we really are in our divine magnificence we're in jobs we don't want to be in we're in uh relationships that aren't fulfilling and we just kind of go ho hum, you know. And that's not what we're here for. We're uh, pain often comes from the settling and the repeating the patterns, rather than expanding and saying, "Here I am, law, use me and allow me to step into a greater way." I would like to say that if you are finding yourself right now in a place you don't feel like, you know, you're putting your whole stuff in, you don't feel like your energy is the level. That's a great start, just to be aware of that. But to do an exercise and write down like the top 15 or 30 things in your life throughout your being born in this time, the things that you go, oh, this happened. Oh, woe is me. This happened. Write them down and then go back and look at them. How did they make you? How did they shape you? How did they create you? And turn that story around because they're not here to make you grow old. They're here to make you grow out. And that's wonderful. Up, right? That's wonderful. And if you still feel injured as a result of these, you know, significant memories that are traumatizing you, the dialoguing technique that I use in Love Never Dies 
many times the people who you have unfinished business with are in spirit, whether they're in spirit or whether not, begin a dialogue with them and tell them how you feel about what they did or didn't do. And you don't have to forgive them. You can be where you are and let them know you're angry and whatever else you feel and move through the injury. And what we discover is that if they are in spirit, they really do see how they screwed up with you and they want to help you to heal. You know, they're not going to respond to you the way that they did when you were a kid. They're not going to yell at you or beat you or retaliate. They really want to embrace you and listen and understand. Heal these injuries because it's so many times the injury that becomes your victim story that keeps you stuck. Whereas if you can move through the feelings and out the other side, now you can do what you do. Like, oh, they murdered my dog and cat. Well, I'm going to now not be stuck in the, I feel horrible. I'm going to save other cats and dogs. I'm going to begin a charity, you know? Right. Exactly. I love what, how you, you know, you're a warrior for transformation, for alchemy, you know, to turn the lemons into lemonade, the lemons of life into mm-hmm. lemonade. So in the last couple mm-hmm. minutes, we only literally have a minute left. Let everybody know a parting word And also, again, how to find you and anything else you'd like to promote. I know that's a lot for a minute, but. Well, templehaze.com, I think is the easiest thing, or I have a public page on Facebook. Um, I have a new book out called um, (laughs) Being a Difference Maker. I had to think about it. It's so new. It's new to me. Being a Difference Maker. And all that's on Amazon. If you just put in my name, Temple Hayes, you know, different books show up. So, uh, yes. And love to hear from you. And that's, again, through the website page or through social. But definitely, you know, we love this work. Um, What I love is that the first place I ever took a stand spiritually and did a public statement and started a community is where uh, Dr. Jamie now lives. So there's this interwoven fabric of life. Isn't that interesting? And, you know, I do. I love the idea. We've never really done anything together. Love the idea of doing something online a group for especially for young kids the only you know thing we have to iron out is how they do it with you know if they're with parents who are abusing them how will the parents give permission and you know stuff like that but we we could figure that out and also I want to see how we would be guided I I would love love to to do do something with you because you're coming from one angle and I'm coming from the other and together We're a, we're a great pair here. (laughs) Absolutely. And next week I'm answering questions, any questions that anyone has. So remember to send me your questions. The whole show is about your questions. AskDrLove.com forward slash questions. And if you come into the studio live, you can talk with me back and forth about my answer. And that's all we have for this week, Temple. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom, your love. It's wonderful having you. Oh, such a joy. Thank you for having me. See you soon. Yes. Take care, everyone. And live in the now with all your feelings. Next time. You've been listening to Ask Dr. Love with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Sign up for Dr. Jamie's newsletter at askdrlove.com and receive her meditation audio that will guide you to open your heart and chill out during these stressful times. 